Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now today's Friday, praise God. Now, all week we've been sharing thoughts on God's truth that is that should help you grow if you apply them in your life. Now, so listening actually, if you can listen again from the beginning of the month when we started talking about fruitfulness, being fruitful and productive. Begin to listen again and again and again. Because most times listening once doesn't do the job. Praise God. Now, can we call for our daily bread? Join me right now in faith as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we had a wonderful time yesterday. Praise God. I, I, I wish. Now, the, the messages, they are available on YouTube, I think, and on Facebook. So you can go and watch it and be part of the, the service again and again and again. Praise God. All right, we're talking about being fruitful and produ being productive. <coughs> and, and we. We were talking about finances for the past two days, how to be fruitful and productive. And the point is this. Aligning yourself with the mind and purpose of God. If that doesn't work in your life, if that's not what you are doing, no matter the multiplicity of the results you're getting, you are not fruitful. Being fruitful is about bearing fruit, the right kind of fruit, the God kind of fruit. That's the expectation the Lord has for you. So if you are not where God has commanded you to be, you will not be fruitful. It doesn't matter what work you do. You will not be fruitful. And don't ever think that Jesus is going to accept whatever you give to him. Say, Lord, I've tried now. I've tried. No. You know why? You see, David told us, except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that builds it. Except the Lord watches over the city. The watchman stay awake in vain. If it's not the Lord that is doing it, forget it. Just forget it. It's useless. It doesn't mean you will not do it. But you see, you will end up realizing that you shouldn't have bothered yourself doing it in the first place. Because at the end of the day, it will not be needed. God is that concerned about everything. And that tells you something. And the reason he's so concerned and particular about it is because before you came, he has planned everything. And that's one truth you must learn to accept in your life. Everything you will need in life, trust me, God was specific before he created you. The kind of cars you will drive, the kind of house you will live in, he was too specific. He was. I'm telling you, street number, everything. Say, how do you know that? Read your Bible. That's the reason God God will go to Abraham and say, leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. And he took Abraham to the land and says, look, I will give you this land. And guess what? People were already occupying the land. And that's the same battle they have till this day between Israel and the Palestinians. <laughs> People were already occupying the land. Why would God give to Abraham a land that is already occupied when there are lots of land that are still unoccupied, never been occupied? You know why? Because that was the land that God wrote concerning Abraham before the world began. Oh, you don't get this. And if you're a child of God, it's the same way God will move you to the very place, the very location that he has ordained for you. It doesn't matter where you are today. The more you keep walking with the Lord and walking with him, one day he's going to move you. If you're not there yet, he's going to move you to the very place that he has ordained for you. 
Oh, you, you, you think God just lets us do what we like. You know, we're in this world, just do. No, he, then that's why I tell you, he said, you, you've got to make up your mind to be seeking God's mind concerning everything. Seek his mind. Seek his mind. Because when you don't, you're going to have a problem. You'll be walking not when God is going south. And at the end of the day, you get to your end and say, Lord, where are you? And the Lord will say, I'm down south here. Turn around and come meet me there. You don't want that in your life. You don't want to do things that will be in vain. No, 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 no. You remember Paul, the Apostle Paul. We're talking about being fruitful and productive. Apostle Paul. Very sad story. But many believers have not recognized this. But there are, there's a lot to learn from it. After he got born again, you can find this in Acts chapter 22. After he got born, now he was giving this testimony. This was not something that was said about him. He himself was giving this testimony. In Acts chapter 22. He was trying to defend himself. Now he, he, had, he had said he wanted to go to Jerusalem to preach. He was too passionate and concerned about his people. Oh, I, I've got to go. They've got to hear me preach the gospel. But you see, that was never the will of God for his life. But he allowed his passion to override the purpose and the will of God. So his journey to Jerusalem was a fruitless one. Fruitless journey. Verse 17, Acts 22. And it came to pass, I'm reading from the Old King James. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. Now this was Paul speaking. I was in a trance and saw him saying unto me, who's the him? The Lord. Saying unto me, make haste. Now look at the framing of these words. The Lord said to him, make haste and get out quick, get thee quickly out of Jerusalem. For they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And that tells us Jesus that was talking to him. So Jesus said, he, he got into Jerusalem and he was in the temple praying. And then he, he oh Lord, the Lord, the Lord will never leave you helpless. The Lord will never leave you without direction. Never. The Lord didn't leave him to figure these things out. He, he got into the temple and he was praying. Suddenly, he, he got into a trance. And the Lord says, hey, make Haste. Now, when God tells you, make haste. Don't sleep next night in that place. Get your things that you can get and start moving. So, the Lord said, he said, make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem. Look, he says, make haste. Get thee quickly. Now, you see those are haste quickly. That's to tell you the urgency with which the Lord wanted him to get out of that town. Why? For they will not receive your testimony. Now, this is the Lord who knows the heart of everyone speaking to you, brother Paul, and says, these people will not receive your testimony concerning me. He didn't say they will not receive me. He said they will see you because you have not been programmed to bring the word to them. Someone else has that responsibility, not you. So leave them alone. Watch. Paul didn't take it easily. Verse 19. He says, And I said, Lord, they know that I imprison and beat in every synagogue them that believe on thee. And when the blood of the, thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. Now, this is what Paul said. Lord, they know me. They know. It's not like I was deceived, you know, like every other person was, you know. They, like they think, you know. They, they know I was against this thing. So when they see me preaching now, they should know that, ah, then this is a very serious matter. That was his thinking. Now, he was arguing 
bringing his mind to argue against the wisdom of God. Look at what Jesus said to him next. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Clear, clear words. If God says they will not, these people will not receive your testimony concerning me, don't think he's saying it because of the moment. He's telling you his truth. And it's just good you accept his truth and move on with your life instead of arguing. There are many people like that. You want to marry someone and the Lord have told you, hey, this lady is not good for you. And then you say, oh, Lord, no, she has suffered with me. She has done this. Oh, Lord, you should have told me these things. Now, hey, it doesn't matter when he tells you. If the wisdom of God says it's not the right thing for you, you better know that he's right. You know why? Because he's seen your whole life before you. You're only seeing the next event. He's seen your whole life. You're only seeing... Because, for example, when it comes to marriage, you only say, oh, I like her, she likes me. But he's seen your whole life. He's seen, you, you remember Ezekiel or Jeremiah? Ezekiel. Or Jeremiah, I think it was Jeremiah. He, 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 he was in a city. And then the word of the Lord came to him and said, you shall not take a wife from this place. And then God said to him, because everybody in this place is going to die of grievous debts. Uh, and I remember reading that. I'm like, what? Lord? What a thing to say. This is God talking. And God said, hey, don't marry from this place. Why? Because see everybody in this place, they are going to die of some grievous debts. And then you said, no, Lord, I, I really like this girl. No, 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 Lord. Uh, they, uh, anything is possible with God. Lord, you can do anything. You, can, you are a God who saves. But he's told you his mind. He's told you his wisdom. His wisdom is leave this place alone. Leave these people alone. Leave that girl alone. No matter how your heart is drawn to the person, if God says forget it, it's not my will for you. You better accept the will of God. And don't start thinking, oh, maybe the, maybe the will of God for me is an ugly girl. You know, God, maybe God does not look at beauty. Oh. You know, that's what people think. Say, have you prayed? Ah, ah, pastor, no, no. Because, ah, why? Hey, what if God now? You know, have you asked God for, your, for his purpose for your life? Hey, no, me, I want to be an engineer. What if God now says I should go and be a preacher in one village in one jungle? Hey, his thoughts concerning you, they are good, not evil. Not evil. So he's seen all your future before you, but you can't see it. And then he gives you wisdom concerning that future. And you know the story about Paul. He, he, he obeyed the Lord. He went and was preaching amongst the Gentiles. But he was still thinking, Lord, I want to go to Jerusalem. I want to go. So when he set his heart to go, you can read this in, 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 in chapter 21, book of Acts. When he set his heart to go to Jerusalem, he got among some brethren. And in the night, the brethren couldn't sleep. Not one, not two. So they came to him and said, Brother Paul, uh -uh, we, we, we couldn't sleep last night. So what is it? This is your trip to Jerusalem. There's something not right about it. Now these were brethren. A wise man will pay attention to what the brethren are saying. I said, pay attention to what they are saying. It should lead you to seek the Lord further concerning the matter. It doesn't mean because the brethren have said it. Ah, since the brethren have said it now. No, but what it does, it should lead you to, no matter what you're thinking, if the brethren, now these are people you know have the Spirit of God in them, if they are saying the same thing, that is opposite to what you're thinking, the smartest thing for you to do is say, okay, thank you, I've heard. Then go back inwards and say, Lord, what do you think? What do you think? You know, many times when, when, when my wife and I were arguing over a decision and she wants it this way and I said, no, this way. And, and I, I, I know my wife respects me a lot. I know she recognizes the authority that I carry, both spiritually and physically. She knows. But then when I see that she's insisting 
on something that I've already given her a nudge that, look, I'm not favorable to that. I, I watch and I see her insist and keep, look, I pause. Because I also know that she carries the Spirit of God in her. So the Spirit of God can use her to nudge me or to, to turn me in the right direction. I know that. Even though I'm the head. Now, this, this is what couples must understand and learn. So when she starts doing that, I am sensible enough. Without telling her, I quietly just turn to the Lord and say, Okay, Lord, despite what I think, what's your mind concerning this? And, and many times, it has opened up something new to us. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. It, it, the, the, Lord, the Lord just said, yes, she's right. Do what she's telling you to do. And then like, but Lord, how? Uh, you know how. <laughs> it's God. Yeah, you know how. It's got to be by faith. So now I understand that, okay, the Lord wants us to go in that direction. Okay, so, so Lord, all right, I'm ready. And then the doors of favor begins to open. The doors of wisdom begins to open. And then suddenly you realize, whoa, you know, how did we get here? See, the wisdom of God. So, so the brethren were telling him, don't go to this Jerusalem. We, we are not getting a good feeling concerning it. And he turned to them and said, what's wrong with you guys? Why do you want to break my heart? Look, look, you people are saying bad things will happen. I'm ready and I'm willing to die in Jerusalem. Now, that's not the right thing to say, brother Paul. God didn't send you to die. That's not the right thing to never, never say things like that. People are nudging your parents, maybe telling you, hey, my son, don't go in that direction, no. Because we are wiser than you. Say, what is it? What is it? You people think you can manipulate my life. If he's, they'll die, I'm ready to die. I must do. Come on, be careful with such things. Nothing is worth a statement like that. Because it may just happen. And then you know the story. As though that was not enough. A prophet came into town named Agabus. When, when Paul met him, he, he took his, his ghetto tied his hands and leg and said, this is exactly how the Jews in Jerusalem would tie the hand. And then they began to tell him, brother Paul, you need to pay attention to these things. This thing is not normal again. This thing is not a conspiracy against your journey. And Paul disobeyed. He still went. Guess what? He got into Jerusalem. He never preached to one soul in Jerusalem. Even in this chapter 22, when he was addressing the brethren, he still couldn't reach out to them. At some point, they got wild and they came against him. And he was locked up in prison for many days. Many days. Never had an opportunity to preach to anybody. And you know the funny thing? All the while he was in Jerusalem, there was not one spiritual encounter that took place in Jerusalem. Until the day he left the shores of Jerusalem in that ship. And they almost had a shipwreck. And then an angel stood beside him and said, Brother Paul, Paul don't be afraid. You will get to Caesar. Now, because he was going into the territories that God had ordained for him. So, you see, that whole trip to Jerusalem was a fruitless one. We're talking about being fruitful and productive. It's not every preaching that is a fruitful preaching. It's not every evangelism that is a fruitful one. It's not everybody, you say, come to the altar and he come to the altar that is a fruit. We must be concerned about aligning our minds with where God wants us to go, where he wants us to stay. Now, that should be our testimony in life. Where you live now, how did you get there? The job you do now, how did you get it? How did you get to that place in the first instance? Were you led there by the Lord or you chose it yourself? The school you're attending today or the school your children are attending today, how did you get there? See that now? Everything about your life must be about fruitfulness. You must have the quality of God in them. If not, those things will pass away. 
But you see, the Bible says, he that does the will of God, he will abide forever. There are believers who have bought cars, and right in that car, they had an accident, and they lost their lives. And you want to wonder, was this a blessing or a curse? And you bought a car, and then it's the, from the day you bought, that car looked okay. But from the day you bought the car, it was from one mechanic to the other, from one problem to the other. You've gone into your savings, and you, you're telling yourself every day, no, this car must work. The devil cannot have. Before you start calling the devil, why don't you pause and ask yourself, where is the fruit in this decision concerning this car? Where is the fruit? You got a job, and from day one, Someone is harassing you and harassing you and harassing you. Before you start calling down fire on him, ask yourself, how did I come here in the first place? Where is the fruit? The Lord is concerned about the kind quality of every decision, everything we get involved with. The Lord is concerned about it. And if you're a true child of God, first, he will talk to you about it because Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. He will tell you a job is coming. When it comes, take it. And then the job may just come in circumstances that are somehow to you. But you remember his word. And, oh, 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 the Lord said, yeah, he told me about a job coming. So because of that, you make a decision. You'll see fruit because that's what bearing fruit is all about. Make your decisions to align with God's word. Make your decisions to align with God's wisdom and God's truth. If you seek him, you will find him. The time is up. I pray for you today that you will not labor in vain in your life. I pray for you today. As he has said, if you are obedient, you will eat the good of the land when you are willing. I pray that your heart will be willing and you will obey every word that the Lord commands you, every wisdom he gives to you. You will not be stubborn to the wisdom of God. And therefore you shall eat the good of the land. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are blessed today. And have a fruitful weekend. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.